Hello, everyone. This is Larry Taylor. This is a special update for the Progressives of Oregon. As everyone has probably heard at this point, Bernie Sanders suspended his campaign yesterday, April 8th at 8.45 a.m. Pacific time. And so this is a brief update on uh, what just happened, what does this mean, and what should we do next? So just to be clear, Bernie Sanders suspended his campaign to be the Democratic Party nominee. He did not drop out which is means is his, his campaign can be reactivated at any point in time, um, especially if Biden becomes unviable between now and August 17th. Um, the New York Times reported late last night that the Biden and Sanders teams have been negotiating this for a couple of weeks. So um, uh, very interesting that that hadn't leaked out because we had denials coming in up to the night before that there was anything going on. But that turned out not to be true. Um, so uh, on other news, what this means for us in Oregon is that we can stop waiting for the Sanders campaign to arrive in Oregon. I think we got a hint that they weren't coming when April 1st arrived and there was no movement for opening up an office of any type or any kind of organizing other than what our revolution was doing, plus all the work that we have been doing in Oregon for Bernie uh, for the past year. Um, but what this does mean that the work done by DSA, PDA, our revolution groups, and Oregon for Bernie is the sum total of the campaign for Bernie Sanders in Oregon. So it's a good thing that we didn't wait because they're never going to come. Uh, we do want to do a special thanks to some special people, uh, Brian Heath, uh, Matt Millington, uh, for doing the incredible signs that they, they placed around rural Oregon. Oregon and to the Bernie Stock organizers who did the last great Bernie Stock concert last year, even though we were uh, kind of rained out, uh, the crowds was diminished, it was still a great event and it'll be sad that we won't have any more. Um, other news from the, or news voids. So if you have not heard about the Democratic convention delay, it has been moved from July to August 17th through the 20th. Uh, it means all those plane reservations that have been made have to be changed and all those uh, Airbnb reservations that people made trying to avoid the high cost of the hotels need to be rebooked. However, we need, we should probably wait and to see what really is going to happen because Biden has suggested that it be a virtual campaign. I have no idea how they would pull that off uh, and make it a democratic uh, uh, meeting, but uh, that's never stopped them before. Uh, there has been no revisions announced to the delegate selection plan in Oregon. So as far as I know, the plans are still to continue with the congressional district uh, conventions happening on June 6th and June 7th, and the state convention to happen on June 20th. If you would like to find out more information about the locations of those events, it's on the dpo.org website. And if you haven't signed up to be a delegate to all of those things, there is a short video on OregonForBernie.org, which walks you through the sort of convoluted questions that you are asked to answer for registering to be a delegate. It is not obvious. It took me three election campaigns to understand the questions and how to answer them. And I think I finally got them right on the last time, but I wouldn't put money on it. So don't feel embarrassed if you find them confusing. They're not how I would have at, uh, written them if I was trying to get anyone to uh, sign up. Uh, we are almost to the point of receiving our ballots. They will be mailed out at the end of April. Um, uh, I just wanted to go over what the status of the delegate count. Uh, so uh, one of the things that have been missing from the news is the total that was has been received by Bernie Sanders in California, which he took a majority of. And it was interesting to see how much emphasis that was placed on uh, states with small delegate counts where where Biden or Buttigieg would win, but almost no news whatsoever about California, which is a, had a huge trove of delegates to be awarded. So uh, at this point in time, Biden is has been awarded 172 delegates out of California. Sanders has 221, which is 49 delegates more than Biden uh, got in the state. And 49 is more delegates than even some uh, the total delegates allocated to some of the smaller states. <clears throat> in Washington State, where we had hoped Bernie would win, he only lost, he only ended up with three delegates fewer than Biden. So that was hardly, hardly, a, hardly a significant loss at that point. Uh, Michigan, the gap was much wider. Biden took 73 delegates, 
Sanders took 32 delegates, so he was 21 delegates underwater there. In Texas, which had another large number of delegates to award, uh, Biden took 111 and Sanders took 102. And so there was only nine delegates difference between what Biden and uh, Sanders took. Colorado and Nevada and Utah were states that Bernie won. So he won for Colorado and picking up uh, seven more delegates than Biden. He took up, he took uh, 15 more delegates than, than Biden in Nevada. So Sanders ended up with 24, Biden 19. And in Utah, which is generally cons considered a conservative state, but has a very progressive set of Democrats, Sanders took 16 delegates to Biden's seven. Um, so over twice as many delegates in Utah. Never heard that in the news. What this means is that there's going to be, for sure, over 900 delegates that we know of going to the convention in support of Bernie Sanders. And if he continues to pick up, even at a minimal weight rate, he will end up with um, uh, well over 1,200, which is a special threshold that we're gonna talk about a little bit later. <clears throat> Who will be listed on Oregon's primary ballot? When we open up our ballots at the end of the month, uh, it'll probably be a surprise to many people uh, who they have to choose from on the Democratic primary. All of the delegates appear to be listed, so we're going to have we're going to be able to cast a vote for Michael Bennett, Michael Bloomberg, Tulsi Gabbard, Duval Patrick, Tom Steyer, Andrew Yang, in addition to Joe Biden, Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, Bernie Sanders, and Elizabeth Warren. Um, I, I don't know what people are going to do when they see those because they've been told that all these people dropped out, yet they can cast a vote for them. Uh, what does this mean at the convention? Well, um, uh, anyone, any of the candidates who pick up more than 15% will be awarded delegates in Oregon. Uh, and so that is what we want to work towards. We want to get more than 15% of the vote so Sanders will have delegates to send. A number of delegates has already been allocated. So in round, round one of the of the convention voting, Warren will have 83 votes, Bloomberg will have 58 votes, Buttigieg will have 26 votes, Klobuchar will have seven votes, and Tulsi Gabbard will have two votes. And they're bound to cast their votes for them. And this is one of the reasons why there is in the realm of possibility that no one will walk into the convention with 1,991 votes or more uh, because of all the ones that have been allocated so far. Uh, uh, it's uh, it, it makes it math mathematically possible that no one will show up with a majority, which was what would happen if it was actually a two-person race. So what Oregon primary voters could do, um, they could vote for Sanders to support the Sanders platform. Uh, what we need to do is get out the message that if you uh, want uh, Medicare for all, then you need to vote for Bernie Sanders so you can send as many delegates as possible to the convention to fight for him. We need more delegates um, attending, and that means a greater presence on the rules and the platform committees to fight for the progressive event of, of, of agendas. Um, if you want universal health care but can't vote for Sanders, then you should not vote in the presidential primary because if Biden does not get a vote, then that does not count uh, in his column and it increases the percentage of standards. And I hope that is clear to everyone. Um, if, if you have a choice uh, and, you, and you happen to be one of these never Sanders voters, but you still believe in healthcare for all, then don't cast a ballot in the primary. Uh, and then what that will do is increase the percentage margin that Sanders will get, which means that he'll end up with more delegates and can fight for your, your issues, which is universal health care, without you having to vote for Sanders. Sanders. So, so that's, that's just for, for the, the, the corner, corner case, case of people, people who, uh, who have, have been, been offended, offended by, by Bernie, Bernie Bros or whatever, or whatever reason, reason they're using for not voting for Bernie Sanders. But you can still vote for the progressive agenda which includes all the other things that Bernie Sanders has, has spoken about, which is you know, increasing the minimum wage and doing something about the climate crisis, uh, which is moving in on us shortly. So if we, have, if we go to the convention and Biden exceeds 1,990 delegates, then he's the nominee and the convention is essentially over. If Biden drops out or does not exceed 1,990, then there will be a second round of voting. Um, 
what this means in terms of who can run all of the can all the candidates whose campaigns have been suspended uh, are eligible again. So those Warren voters who who voted in the first round because they were committed, they were pledged delegates to Warren, they are now free to vote for someone else. Um, and presumably before the second round of voting, they will take nominations from the floor, which is how we could end up with uh, Cuomo or Clinton being candidates in the running. And of course, there will be a lot of organizing going on in the background. Uh, if you read the newspapers, and especially those from the East Coast, you can just feel the drumbeat for Andrew Cuomo in the background <laughs> continuing on. I don't think Andrew Cuomo is a, a acceptable candidate from my perspective, but uh, I'm just one voter. Larry Cohen, who is the chair of our revolution, wrote an op-ed piece um, a week ago, Monday, and he made a case for Sanders staying in. And what he was arguing in the article, which I recommend you read, is that we need to win at least 291 more delegates, and this is not counting Wisconsin, in the remaining primaries. And what this will do is achieve 25% of the delegates, and that will allow the progressive Democratic contingent to push for retaining the current reforms, which is uh, things like uh, the cleaning up of the caucus rules. So one of the reasons why we learned about the sordid vote counting in caucuses is because in the Unity Commission, they, they, they negotiated for greater transparency in how the votes were reported. Uh, other reforms was things like the superdelegates not voting on the first round of the convention. Those reforms will go away because those were only agreements for this convention only. And uh, there are those of us who would like to make these permanent. And then we would like to push for further reforms. As we've talked about in Progressive Oregon shows previously, things like the appointment of members to the Rules Committee uh, should be geographically dispersed and not just a bunch of East Coast political hacks, which, sorry if I've offended anyone, but really, if you look at who is sitting on the Rules Committee, that there, there are very few people who actually understand democracy, but they understand a lot about politics. <clears throat> Uh, and we need them on there to push for further reforms. As Larry explains, under the current rules, 25% of the committee members can bring a minority resolution to the floor and to be voted on by the whole convention. We would first try to get these passed in the rules committee of the convention. Uh, and if not, then we could bring it directly to the floor. Um, and he believes that we can do this even if if it's a virtual convention. Uh, it will be interesting to see how that will work out because if you don't have your finger in control of the audio switch, you will not get to speak in an electronic meeting. So finally, what Larry Cohen said is for those of us who believe that healthy political parties matter and that the deficiencies of the Democratic Party must be remedied, we must continue to move forward with Democratic Party reform. So again, this is why we need to send as many delegates as possible from Oregon, and we need to continue working for the rest of the time between now and May 19th to gather votes for uh, Bernie. So what can we do? Uh, we need to work to maximize Sanders' percentage of the Oregon primary votes. Um, uh, in addition to voting for Sanders, we need to uh, get people excited about the election to vote for the down ballot candidates. Uh, we have Mark Gamba, who's running for the 5th Congressional District against Kurt Schrader. Kurt Schrader can barely admit that he's a Democrat. Uh, we have Albert Lee running in the 3rd Congressional District, um, and we have Doyle Canning running against Peter DeFazio. Even the existence of Doyle Canning's candidacy has made uh, Peter DeFazio a much more at least he's presenting himself as a much more pro progressive candidate. He even appeared on our web revolution uh, live stream broadcast in the past couple of days. And then there are local candidates like Kate Davidson and Eugene that really need support um, uh, uh, to get on the Eugene City Council. Uh, we need to continue dialing through our revolution. Emma Darden uh, uh, is creating sessions daily. Uh, and if you go to uh, OregonForBernie.org, you can see a, a video about how to sign up for uh, to do dialing. Uh, the message between now and, for, and, and the end of April that we need to clarify because it's getting very muddied up 
very muddled in the media. Bernie is still running and we need their vote to support issues like Medicare for all. The message between the beginning of May and the and the, about the 15th uh, should be calls to make sure that people got their ballot. If they have not received their ballot, uh, they need to contact their elections office. Another benefit of this call is to make sure that they know that there's an election going on because even though many of us are immersed in the political process and have known about this for months in advance, there are people who have been caught up in you know, the plague or their personal lives or their job loss or whatever, and they're really not focused on the election. And we need to remind them that this important civic event is coming up. And then we need to do some final calling between May 15th and May 19th to remind people that at that point in time, it is too late to mail your ballot in. Uh, you need to take it to a drop box in Oregon. Uh, unlike other states where it just needs to be postmarked, the postmark does not count in Oregon. You have to have your ballot in a drop box or at the elections office by 8 p.m. on May 19th. We've heard stories about the Democratic, uh, the Democratic Party now trying to disenfranchise Bernie Sanders of votes. Uh, I saw a message this morning, don't know how true it is, but it, it certainly is believable that the party in Colorado has now announced that Bernie Sanders will be able to keep his delegates that he won at the congressional district, but because he dropped out, he will not get them at the, at the uh, statewide convention, which is hogwash. So you need to watch out for this in the 20 or so states that are remaining to vote. This is uh, not the way the process works and you need to get in there and demand that the Democratic Party follow their rules. And if you got screwed um, uh, because they wrote the rules to, to disenfranchise you, then uh, this is just a lesson for next time. You have to get in there and watch them very closely and think through the implications of what they pass. We were able to clean up a lot of things here in Oregon but you know there were a few things that still got through because unfortunately we control a minority in the rules committee and so we had to suck up some unfortunate changes in the convention rules finally when we organize we win the progress for the progressive movement needs to coalesce and work together this is something that the progressives had had great difficulty in doing uh, you know, we, we saw at the 2016 convention was a lot of great intentions, but not a lot of leadership and structure that needs to change next time around. Uh, what you can do uh, right now is join the People for Democratic Party Reform. That is at the website pdpr.org. If you are a delegate or a candidate to be a delegate to the Democratic National Convention, or are a delegate or a candidate to be a delegate to your state party, or a delegate or a, a candidate delegate to the Democratic National Committee, which is coming up in the next 12 months, uh, we would like you to join in and work together with other progressives from across the United States to make these critical reforms within the Democratic Party so it is more democratic. Um, finally, uh, uh, let's show the slide of the uh, rural organ for Bernie. Uh, this is just one of the many efforts that happened in Oregon outside of the Portland metro area of people coming together. Uh, you know, we were hoping that Bernie would make it all the way to the convention and, and uh, be the nominee, but that's not going to happen. So um, thank you everyone who worked so diligently over the past year to move the progressive agenda forward. Um, and we hope that you still stay involved and do the calls through May 19th to make uh, Bernie share as great as possible in the Oregon primary. Anything you'd like to add, John? Nope. Thank you so much, everyone.